Hello friends, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the gas station, an extremely busy gas station, it's probably the busiest night I've had since I've worked here, it's in, it just doesn't stop, it's insane, <laughs> I think people know it's getting ready to rain, ah, what's going on folks, this is June 19th. Juneteenth, folks. I guess this is the day that word finally reached Galveston, Texas of the emancipation and the slaves were freed. You think. Slavery was abolished for private ownership of slaves, but the government can still own all of us as slaves. If you think about that. And I say that in jest. I don't want to hear no crap from it. It's my vlog. I can say what I want. But yeah, the government has enslaved all of us. I guess they learned how to do it. Yeah, by the way, how was everybody's weekend? Hope y'all had a good one. Hope your week's starting off good. Because this is Monday night. Um, mine's starting off great. I had a great weekend. I didn't do a whole lot, but... I did a lot, it seems like. <laughs> All right. Did you see this? We need to pay attention to this, folks. This is, you know how things start, and you've heard that term, a slippery slope? Well, this is one of them. This is a slippery slope, so we can't let them get away with what they're trying to get away with. This guy in Virginia has about 30 acres. And his son and wife were out playing basketball. The basketball rolled towards the wooded area of his property. When they went to retrieve it, they saw some guy out in the woods there in camouflage. And it scared them. They went running back into the house and told, you know, told him there's somebody out there. So he went out there thinking it was hunting season. He went out there thinking it was a hunter. And uh, he couldn't find anybody. I mean, it's, you know, uh, no trespassing signs everywhere. He couldn't find anybody. Figured they left. Well, then he noticed one of his trail cams was missing. So he called the police to report his trail cam had been stolen. Well, come to find out, that person in camouflage was a government agent and the Virginia Department of Wildlife Resources had confiscated his trail cam looking for evidence of illegal hunting or something like that. Trespassed on his property, stole his camera without a warrant or without any uh, notice that they were going on his property. That ain't right, folks. I mean, the basics here is we, as ordinary citizens, we are not allowed to go onto somebody else's property and trespass and steal their cameras. Well, the government thinks they're allowed to, right? Without a warrant, they went onto his property and stole his trail cam. And we know they shouldn't be allowed to do it. Now, his brother was cited in April for hunting over bait, right? The uh, uh, game wardens found some seeds in the field where he was hunting and determined that those seeds were bait and the guy was waiting there for them to come to get the bait so he could kill the turkeys, I guess. Anyway, he's fighting it. Well, this is his brother now who lost his trail cam. Ironically, about 100 years ago, the Supreme Court ruled that the Fourth Amendment protection against search and seizures did not apply to open fields. Uh, regardless of the owner. 
Now, some states have rejected that and put that protection back in place for its citizens. Virginia hasn't done that yet, right? You, you ha we, they have to have a warrant and there has to be circumstances involved that justifies that warrant. We cannot let them start sneaking onto our properties and taking our stuff thinking it might contain evidence of illegal activity without a warrant. You just, you can't do it. So, I'm, I'm interested to see how this case turns out. I'm, I'm really, we got to get behind this guy and make sure and watch this to see what's happening. Because... I was talking to one of my neighbors out there and we we're all like you know we're an informal group right <laughs> nobody pays to be a part of this group we each have our property we each do different things and we all discuss things and you know we know what's coming and we we're all going to do things as a group but there's no f formality to it you know i can't tell anybody out there what to do they can't tell me what to do we just we all work together that's the way it is um tim lives about i don't know a mile from me go down the hill and out a little bit he's got a bunch of cows and chickens and a garden. So he was telling me that they're discussing in the county taxing home gardens and making you get a permit for those gardens and report what you are planting and how much you are planting and pay taxes on that. I kid you not, folks, I've heard that before through the grapevine, if you will. But this was the first time actually talking to somebody who is rather nervous that they're going to do this to him. Yeah, it's not the law yet. It's just, I guess, the House is discussing it or something. I don't know. But they're going to do it. It's going to happen. Right? And I, I believe it will happen not just for tax money. They don't care about that. They want to know where the food is. And I think what this can lead to, you know, the same thing I tried to explain to you guys about the Fed Now program that starts next month, where all of your online purchases, you know, using PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, Zelle, those kind of things, are now processed through a branch of the federal government. And then paid to, like Amazon, if you buy something from Amazon and you use your credit card, well, it goes to the government, then they pay Amazon. It's a way to track everything that's bought or sold, right? That's all this is for, which will lead to later on, I believe, they're going to determine whether or not you need that. At some point, they will have that power then. No, I don't think you need to buy that Waller household. You're not going to get to spend your money on that. Well, if you think about if they got to, you know, issue permits and they find out how much you're planting. Now, I understand for big farms because, you know, that's a business. But this is not a business. This is home gardens. Um, but if they know what you planted, how much food you have, then one day they're going to knock on your door and say, look, for the better good of the people, we're taking your extra food that you've grown and giving it to the indigent, you know, the less fortunate ones. Basically, we don't want you to be self-reliant. That's what scares them the most. The People like us who want to be free, who want to be self-reliant, self-sustaining, we scare them because you can't control us. Right? Therein lies the problem. That's why they're trying to do all this stuff. 
Remember they used to fly airplanes over fields looking for uh, marijuana fields and people growing marijuana in their backyards. Well, now they're going to be flying drones around looking for your tomato plants. Uh, or if, if you got some peppers planted somewhere. I'm telling you folks, it's a scary thing. But that's what's coming. I, re I really believe that. And we have to stay on top of this. Now, Tim was telling me as we were talking, he's like, look, it's time. I'm ready. I We got to do something. And he was like, what do you need me to do? You call me if you decide what we need to do and we have to go do what has to be done. He said, I'm there. You know? Uh it's hard to talk about it on YouTube, of course, but we all know what we're talking about. So, it's scary times. It really is. And all these things add to that sense of urgency. Because I want to make a comment about another YouTube channel, one of his favorite sayings, and he says it all the time, right? In pretty much every video, you hear slow and steady. Slow, slow and steady wins the race. Well, you know what? We're in a race, folks. And you can't be slow about getting prepared. Because it's coming. There is Now is not the time to be slow and steady. Now is the time to bust your butt and get ready. Because you don't have time to be slow anymore. You know, I was in business. I, I didn't own a business, but I was, you know, I worked for 45 years. Every job I ever worked, every boss I ever had, when I was a boss, it didn't matter. Those words never came into play in that environment. There was nothing in my job or my business that slow and steady worked. <laughs> I was in direct marketing and direct mail. Our shit had to be in the post office that night. There was nothing slow about that. You get the stuff done. And I'm telling you, I don't know about the rest of you, but I really feel this sense of urgency. This, this, it's just coming. And we can't be slow about it. We can't be lackadaisical about it. You have to start getting ready and you have to pick up the pace. You know, I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm just talking realistically. That's why I'm trying so hard to get my house built out there and get my rain catch bingo, get everything done. The last few years because of work and, and money, it's been kind of slow. Well, I can't be slow now. I gotta get this I gotta get it done. Ain't nobody waiting on me. You know, if it's gonna happen, they're not gonna wait, hey Joe, are you ready for this? No, it's gonna happen. So I wanna impress upon you, you know, I, it's not like he's the only one. I've heard it on other channels. I I at one sentence it's slow and steady, and the next sentence is we gotta hurry up and get ready because the world's coming to an end. You know, so, well, which one is it? <laughs> what are you trying to tell us what to do here, you know? That's why I don't listen to most of the channels, you know? It just, it, it's just, I just feel like I need to encourage people to start thinking about this and start getting things together. Uh, I can't tell you how to prep. I can't tell you what you need. You need to be ready though for something to happen and I'm not saying look at all the tornadoes that are going on now look at the the weather be prepared for that you know we are basically 95% of the people are nine nine meals away from hunger they might have three days worth of food and that's it then they're going to be hungry they don't have any water. When the tap doesn't work, you got three days. 
and you're going to die. So you've got to get some plans formulated because that could happen. I'm not saying it's going to. And it's not going to, I'm not saying that the, you know, the, it's because of a financial collapse or riots or whatever, you know, you get these storms coming through and you could go two or three weeks before you can get services. And these storms are spreading the emergency services sectors. They're spreading too thin. FEMA, you know, and, and the Red Cross and all these people that want to help out the Salvation Army. They're getting so far spread out, they can't help everybody. So you're not going to be able to count on them. You're going to have to do something for yourself. You know? And if it's as simple as, you know, storing a few gallons of, of water this month, you know, a little bit of freeze-dried foods or canned goods, you know, don't buy the freeze-dried foods, they're too expensive. Uh, buy some extra canned goods. You know, I got a whole bunch of those $1, or now they're probably fifty sides, the Knorr or whatever they're called. You get them at the dollar store, you throw them in boiling water. You know, uh, those are good. I mean, things like that, that is not, you know, replacement for your daily food, but it's you'll survive on it. And there will come a time where that could happen. You need something for a couple of weeks. You need to, to get there. You know, strive for that. Get yourself set up for a couple of weeks. And then you're good to go. You can sleep easier. And I can sleep easier knowing that you're better off now. That's all. I don't know how much money you got to spend. I don't know what you want to spend it on. I don't care what you spend it on. Try to do something. If you have to clean out your milk jugs and fill them up with water, at least you could sanitation purposes, you could do that. You know, and boil it to cook with or to clean with. You know, water, I'm telling you, man, they turn the tap off and you're done. There is no uh, surviving that. That's just not going to happen. Anyway... That's how I feel about slow and steady. That's gone. We were talking about that Saturday night, too. Man, we had a good live stream. I got a little touchy on a particular subject, and next thing you know, I had to restart it. Uh, but that's okay. I, I can restart as many times as I need to once we get into it. Oh, and uh, I need to ask y'all's opinion on this. Ron Foster, the author that was in there, you know, I showed some of his books that I've read and I enjoy. Um, he, he's going to send me some books to do giveaways, which are great books. They're great for, for, you know, ideas is what it is. And he's got a shipment of books on its way to me. I'm going to do one every week. I know how to ship books. I sell books on eBay. I know how to pack a book. If I pay three dollars and sixty-five cents media mail, and it mails, <laughs> so it's not like I'm not going to have the money to send these books out to you guys. But I think to make it fun, what we might do is, and you guys tell me how to handle this. Uh, say at nine o'clock during the live stream, we have our, pro, you know, our game, and I'll ask some kind of a trivia question. And it may be about homesteading, it may be about survival, it may be about preppers, who knows. I'll ask uh, a trivia question. And whoever answers it first, wins that night's book. You know, we'll, we'll come up with a contest to make it fun. Uh, and I think he sent me something like 35 different books. So, hey, we'll have some fun with it. And have an opportunity to learn. That's what's important. Um, but yeah, it was a good live stream. I really enjoyed it. What else is happening? I love my camera out there, by the way. Check out that video I did on that uh, camera. I love it. In fact, I just got notification, so let me see what happened. Motion detection. Oh, got motion detection tonight. Let's see what moved out there. 
Holy crap! It is windy as crap out there. Dang! I don't know if y'all can see that or not, but... Look at those trees and everything blowing. I mean, it's moved my camera. It's not in the position it used to be. At 3.30, it detected motion. See, there it is normally. That's where the camera is supposed to be. But it catches bugs. I mean, I'm still working with the sensitivity and what type of motion it should detect. Now I'm curious what the weather says. It's 75. Oh, the rain starts in 10 minutes out there. And... Holy crap! <laughs> See that rain every day. And I don't have the plumbing yet on my IBC totes. Damn it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the next ten days. Rain. Uh, anyway, that's about all I want to talk about, folks. <laughs> you know how I, I ramble and go from one, you know, thing to another. Uh, but like I said, I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. Had a wonderful weekend. I hope everybody has a wonderful week. Let me know what you think about my uh, game idea for doing these books that Ron's sending me. Because I want to get them out to people. Because it really does. The ones I've read of his, you know, there's just really good ideas. And, you know, prepping ideas and knowledge on every level. So it's nothing really hard to read and it's nothing, you know, you can really pick up ideas from it and, and, and learn things from them. So I recommend them. Heck, I'm going to be sending them to you so you better read the damn things. I'm going to close this thing out. I can't believe I went this long without a customer. I couldn't eat. It never stopped. I turned this camera on and I haven't had a customer since. Now I know the trick. You guys are going to have to put up with me every night now. Um, Alright, that's it. I'm getting the hell off of here before I get in more trouble. Remember, get prepared. Work on that. Do me a favor. Tell me what you're doing. If you got questions, ask me. If you got advice you want to share with others, put it in the comments. We'll bring it up. You got something you want me to talk about in one of these? Or something you want me to talk about in a live stream? Leave me a comment. Let me know. You know, we'll sure enough do it. We'll do whatever we can to help everybody out. You know, that's my kind of group. We're just a group. You know? So, this is Joe at the gas station. I'm out.